How's it going? My name's Matthew, aka EasyBot, and welcome to another episode of Electron Talk, episode 43. It is 93 degrees out in Seattle. And that's definitely something to complain about because I don't know how many air conditioners you have to buy to air condition like 1,200 square feet of home footage for it to actually cool you down, but it is so hot in my music studio right now. And I have that SSL Big Six. I know you, you can't really see it. You see the bright r red light in the corner there? That's the SSL. It just dumps hot air. That's like what it's good for. It's probably better at dumping hot air into your studio than it is at mixing audio. That's kind of how I feel about that machine at this point. Charles Bronson. When is it? When is what? Um, that's a good question. When is it? I don't know. I don't know when it is. Not sure. Today we're going to make uh, some techno from scratch on the Electron mothership, as I often call it. What's up, Frigo? Welcome to the stream. This is a weekly stream that I do here on this channel. And uh, talk, uh, talk Electron gear, talk modular, talk everything. And usually make some music from scratch and perhaps talk a little bit about maybe a video that was released earlier in the week, so which I think is something that we should do. So yesterday, I think it was yet yesterday, I released the video on the true DJ transition trick. I suppose I should retitle it to the true DJ transition looper because I didn't give a proper example during the video. Those technical videos, they're hard to film, so I don't know, forgive me for not giving a proper example of transitioning from the same BPM over. Uh, I was showing off that you could transition between two different BPMs, which is not something you would do as a DJ, but I was showing off how the technicality of the, I don't know, of the Octatrack being able to do that. It's, it's something, it was a pain in the ass to set up and uh, I finally got it working and it works well and it sounds good, but there is a technique to it and we should probably talk about that. So one thing I want to chat about that is if you're using a DJ transition like the looper that I mentioned, you can turn time stretch on. If you turn time stretch on the loop and then so what you do, here's the process. You capture an eight bar loop of your music. Most likely your patterns aren't beyond eight bars. So no one's going to know that you're looping, right? That's the whole point. You, you loop the length that your pattern is. And if you want it to be a variable length loop, you can do that on the Octatrack as well, just by changing the, um, I'll show you by changing the quantization record length in whatever track you're recording on. If it's the techno template I'm releasing, it would be on track four. So anyway, my point is, is that if you want, you can turn time stretch on when you're recording an eight bar loop, that loop will disassociate from the track and cycle over and over. And you can bring the tempo down manually and it will time stretch your track to whatever tempo the next track is. And then when you transition to the next track, you can, you'll already be at the right tempo, so it won't change anything, right? And then you can crossfade over. That's a proper DJ transition. Um, uh, on the other side of things, you can bring the tempo down before you capture the loop, which is how I have it set up in the video that I released. So you capture, you'd bring the tempo down to whatever the next track is slowly, you know, that way you can do it um, smoothly. You capture an eight bar loop after you've brought the tempo down to the next track's tempo, transition to that loop, and then crossfade over from that loop into your new track. That is a proper DJ transition, and that is what that looper from that video will do for you. That's how it works. That's the trick. And if you can do that, there's going to be a little bit of a volume dip in the middle. Um, but as I was saying, let me finish my sentence. If you can do that, then you're a badass and your music will be more fun to listen to at a live show because you won't have any any uh, downtime in your performances. My, my cold sparkling water is not cold any longer. Did not take long. A real disappointment. Femto, what up? GG Blaps. 
Blah, 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 blah. Hola. How are you? It's Monday evening. I'm thinking I might do streams on Mondays now instead of Sundays. Is there a way not to have this volume drop in the middle? Okay, so I actually kind of did figure this out. There is a way to not have the volume drop, and I'm going to do another video to show how to do it because I just figured it out. Um, I actually had the thought a while back, but I hadn't put it into action yet. So what you do is instead of muting the audio, what you do is you have the filter width close and the high pass completely open and have it crossfade in between high pass and low pass filters of two different segments. So a completely open filter on one side and a completely closed filter on another and you, you switch them. And if you do that, they don't have the volume dip in the middle because the frequencies add up in the center to keep the volume the same. It's super weird, but it, it seriously works. Um, I could show I can show you. Do I want to set it up? I'd have to set it up. I don't have it all set up, but um, you can use the filter, which is cool. I don't know. Maybe we could check it out later. This is some. Uh, I guess this is. I guess this is minimal techno. <laughs> like minimal techno is like a joke on my channel, because I'm always, I'm always trying to make it and failing, and I feel like I, I did it. I did it. And it didn't take me very long, and here's what it sounds like. And I kind of like, you know, how I did it was by watching random Richie Houghton videos, even though he's not playing minimal, just watching random R Richie Houghton videos, and then just doing less than Richie, basically. Here we go. I mean, it's, it's very early in the pattern. I can talk, we can talk about it. There's no digitone happening here. Also, I want to just double check, like, is the, how's the volume? You hear me all right? I have fans blowing all over the place trying to keep me cool. This cable's not cool, that's for sure. Not very cool. Love it if someone would tell me how the volume is. What's up, Squilla? How be? How be? That's how lazy I've become. How you be? Volume is okay. S sounds great versus okay. I'm not sure who to believe here. Send was okay. <laughs> I don't know. Who do I trust? With all the fake news going around, who do you trust? No one knows anymore. Let's get a little more light over here. Sounds good. Thanks, Charles. Sound. Thanks, Rave Dump. Love it. You have a wrench next to you because you're a moderator. And so is Femto. Yeah. So is Femto. Because you are my IRL homies. And they get mod status. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. Imagine all the things you can do with this moderator status. You're just like, gonna make so many new friends now. Everyone's gonna like you. You're gonna get the job you want. There's no doubt in my mind. This stream is uh, sponsored, by the way, by me. I'm sponsoring the stream. Check it out. Sponsored by ModBang. ModBang is the coolest thing in the whole world. If you don't know what ModBang is, ModBang is my company. We make these colorful, lovely cables. These are transparent MIDI cables. We're doing a commercial. Focus, God damn it! There we go. Everyone, everyone gather around. We're doing a commercial. This is a ModBang MIDI cable. I only have them in three feet right now, but they're dope. These ones, maybe it'll focus better. Focus, you demon. These ones glow in the dark. They're pretty cool. Glow in the dark MIDI cables. But check this out. This is the Electron Riser. This one's for IntelliGel palette cases. So we make them not just for Electron. I'll put it on my face. You wear them like this. It's a fashion statement. Um, you don't use them. They're not utility. They're actually, they're just for looks. No, they work really well. They're, they're fantastic. They're really well built. 
We make them in-house, put them together. They're, they do require some assembly on our part, very little on yours. They work fantastic. That's how the cables, that's how you can't see the cables in my gear. You know, we have to do these commercials because, because I, you know, invested in building this kind of stuff. So I need to show people it. So don't get mad at me for being a businessman. This is what a businessman looks like. Business them. Business them. And this business them also has this possible giveaway today. I have to think of something, a good reason to give it away. I have to solve some sort of puzzle. But these are self-patch cables. They also glow in the dark. They're our new right angle cable. This is a pack of all the colors that we have. Little self, we call them little self-patch packs. And I'd be happy to give them to somebody, but I haven't figured out how to challenge you. You gotta do something for me. This is business them. It's business time. We ain't playing around. It's business time. Let's get back to my Richie Hotton beat. I threw a 303 on this, but it didn't work very well. Should we check it out? Those notes don't sound like they work at all. Maybe they would work if I had the right notes. I honestly feel like, a, like this track doesn't need very much. You know what's really tying it together is that dissonant bonk. That like bonk. This is the toy engine and I just like set an LFO to make it inharmonic. So it kind of just like sounds weird, <laughs> which is very techno. Anyway, I said this is going to be techno from scratch, so we're not going to play this track. We're going to start from scratch, and we're going to make it the same thing again. Mm-hmm. What's that? Sounds kind of cool. Let's see. It's industrial. looking for a free slot so I can whatever we write can be in my set here we 
There we go. We found our free slot. We had to go through all those, all those tracks. All right. Well, I've completely forgotten how to do it, so. I guess we'll need to go hit Google how to techno. Maybe Chet GPT can tell me. That's actually a good question. For Chet, for Chet. We could ask Chet what it thinks. No, no, I don't want to bring that over. Freaking Chet GPT. All right. I'm going to start with some sort of weird sound. So let's dig in to the syntax. A second. Where's the music that was there? I actually really like that sound. I'm gonna copy that. Paste it. Sixty? No, 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 no. How long is this for? like this. Oh, bring the pattern length up to 128 for everything. So I like to work in eight bars. I meant the master length up to 128. Dang. There's like a little click in there, and I hate clicks, but I honestly don't know what to do about it, so. I said we're making techno, I didn't say what kind of techno. I didn't say 
dub techno. Maybe we're making dub techno. We don't know what kind of techno we make until after we make the techno. But we know that this is making me happy, so I'm gonna keep doing it. Um, I wanna get oh, another, like, I wanna get a dissonant sound in here, so I'm gonna go back over to that, that, like, bell toy engine. What is up with this? LFO on form. LFO on form. Did somebody order an LFO to form? I did. Make this track longer. Now we have four bars of kicks, and then we're gonna take out the last kick. I always do this. We could copy this kick, paste it here, micro time it back, make it. Um... Oh no! Here, check us out. What we're gonna do is make this kick not trigger by putting in a conditional trig here that does one of two or two of two, and this one doesn't trigger if the trigger before it works. So that will mute this trigger. It's a clever little... All right. Let's see you do it. Yay! I love that trick. You can do that all over the place. Like, the advantage of doing something like this, like using the conditional trig that doesn't actually have a sample, is that you can tell samples in the middle of your sequence not to play as opposed to setting things at one of two, two of two, three of three, or whatever, there's not an inverse of one of two, two of two, three of three. The inverse is to make it not play if something before it does play. And so it works really well on stuff that has open spaces in the grid, like uh, your snare rolls or hi-hats or kick drums, for instance, where it works really well here. I, mean, I always go with the analog baseline. We don't have to do analog baseline, but. Thank you. 
double this one, make some sort of something variation here. how this sounds. Oh, I hate it. I hated it. What's up, Dallas House Music? Harry Imster, nice treat on a Monday, thank you. With techno, you have to be unique. Use obscure equipment or just make the whole track from a single cycle. Form a leaf decaying over time lapse. <laughs> okay, thanks Duke. Duke with the, the hardcore tips. Go business them, that's right. See how this sounds. Are these notes locked in? They are locked in. I guess we can play with the oscillator and see. We'll save this. I just want to see how this would sound at a different pitch. like the dubby kick with the filter on it? I don't know. Happy techno. I guess we need to make it sound more evil, huh? We can. got this chord plan. What is it? It's a major add nine. We could change it to a minor, minor add nine. All right, now we're in sad tech. Now you ready?
minor add nine instead of a major. It's too housey for who? <laughs> the most evil music I ever heard was Sven the. <laughs> All right, now we made it evil with our minor note, with our minor third. Don't forget your minor thirds, everybody. Shit's free. Okay. What do we need? What do we need? What do we need? Let's ask Richie Hot. Richie. What would Richie do? You know what we're missing is like some big sounds, some wide sounds. Speed it up a bit. We could duplicate this hat. Paste it here. We can make it really wide that way. some some fluttery stuff <laughs> thanks Duke gonna have something kind of just like rise up. Copy this, paste it. Here's a little trick for doing little snare rises, hi-hat rises. So we turn on our retrig, give it whatever speed you want it to be. We could we could do 16. You bring the velocity up to 127. Go into your trig menu and bring the velocity all the way down. That way it starts from silence and then goes up. Go until it goes. 
longest. A little longer than I want it to go. Nice. Do that one of two. We don't want that to happen all the time. Let's go over here, let's play with this like impulse engine. Let's go like five three quarters scale, let's make this weird. Now we have some like water droplets. Come here. That's better. Some ambient sounds. I don't know if I'm going to keep it, but it's kind of fun to play with. Definitely use a noise riser though. Photo trig is turned off. No wonder.
I want to have it actually start earlier. I mean, we're not gonna make it trigger every single time. No, that didn't work. Let's push it back here. steps. I guess even longer. No, it's the LFO is the problem. It needs to be at one and eight, I think. And the step length should be 64. So it should be half the, should be half. That's much closer to what I'm after. Let's turn that up. Let's find out. Luma, what'd you say? You think the little plex, the little noise uh, pings would be good as a, Oh. I want it to be kind of abrupt. Just release, turn that off. Let's change this to an attack hold envelope. There we go. Now it's gonna kind of, now it will stop the noise riser exactly when it's over. Yes. sounds.
mean, we can't have that noise riser doing that over and over again. I'm gonna lose my freaking mind. So, uh, I have it do it like every four times. Just to remind us, when the noise riser happens, it means like it's time to move on to do something else, new pattern, new something. I don't know. All right, I do feel like we could put a 303 in here. That's the action we're going for. I was turning on the ability to do slides and, uh, well, and accents. I cut the tempo in half for the 303? I can. Should we hear what that sounds like? You want to hear what that sounds like? We just changed the scale to half speed. I don't know about that. It is cool. That is cool. Let's try. That's whack. We'll duck the 303, we'll give it some more rhythm. How about that? It's 
Swing. You're right. You're right. You're right. We do need swing. You're not wrong. So to do swing on the Octatrack, you go into track trig edit, highlight swing, hold function, and turn the level encoder. Let's go to like 50. Let's try 58. And then over here, uh, da, 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 da. we gotta match them. We gotta match them all to the same swing because they're independent swing. You can't control that via another box. Well, this is hella like groovy. This is so bouncy now. The way I did the ducking is the digitone is going into the syntax and I just turned on the effects. Um, I turned on the input for the effects block on the syntax so that it can duck anything running into the digitone. And the 303 is being processed through the digitone. So my audio chain goes like this. Digitact into inputs A and B on the Octatrack. Digitone goes into Syntact so that I can use the Syntax effects block. Also so there's just less cable mess. And then the 303 goes into the Digitone so that I can have access to Chorus, which is awesome because nothing else here has Chorus. Um, so then I can Chorus the Syntact and also give it a better delay and reverb because the one on here is cool, but it's not as good as the Electron one. And then all of that runs from the Syntact, goes pipes through here into the Octatrack into input C and D. And I, all my effects in the performance templates that I make, and the way that I just design my workflow, whether it's on the Octatrack or on the computer or in modular and all that, I always divide my music into separate buses where I keep melodic elements separate from drum elements so I can process them um, kind of exclusively. Because I really think that your music benefits from those buses. Like when you're working in Bitwig, or Ableton, or Logic, or whatever, FL, whatever you're using, you create groups for your different elements and you process them separately, right? You'll compress your drums in a certain way. Maybe you'll compress your basses in a certain way. Um, and you'll keep your sends separate from those groups so that they can be clean. Or maybe you'll have specific effects sends for those groups that get processed in a certain way. That's kind of what I'm trying to do here in my setup is I keep these things separate. So everything that goes into input CMD, I can have my own compressor settings um, if I like for this specific input. I can have my own compressor setup for this specific input. And if you're on the Octatrack and you go into the secondary menu here, the RMS dial in here uh, determines how much, how that compressor treats the incoming audio. Fully turned up RMS is gonna treat that audio like a, a bus compressor and all the way turned down is going to be closer to more like what you would compress a single hit right or more like a vocal compressor i have it at 50 percent by default i don't really mess with it too much but i think on the track input for the drums it might be better to have it turned up more i don't know we can experiment with that but i do like this i like this i like it we did good work Let's save it. It's very bouncy, very bouncy techno. Let's hear how it sounds if we perform it a little bit. What I, do, what I don't like is the chord engine is always full of pops and clicks on the syntax. It's just like, I, it's fine for this music, but I don't like it. It makes me mad.
ping these and try and tune them. I think that one's in tune. Just copy that. Taking the clap, I'm copying it, pasting it over here. So now it's the same sound. We'll just literally take this track, paste the whole thing. actually not do that but if we do this have this trig go for two steps I can give that reverb it's fine that nah, doesn't work how unfortunate
All right, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I'm feeling like we're still in techno territory. I haven't ruined it yet. I haven't. We haven't left techno territory yet. Hmm. All right. Okay. What do we need? Ask the vocoder what it thinks. Vocoder. Vocoder, do you love me? Do you love me? Vocode me. Vocode. Vocoder. Be my valentine. No robot. Harmony. We could do some weird. Yeah, let's try one of these. Weird harmony selections. Harmony, get out of here. Harmony, 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 harmony. Stop. What? Dorian, D sharp five. Uh. search for something. Somebody, I need a line, please. Michael Squilla, are you using the compressor on the dig attack? I am. I am indeed. It's getting double compressed. Like half speed with a one eighth delay? That's what Luma says. Photo, 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 photo of a painting. I always think of like the the classic techno with like the European, I mean, Europe, foreign, a foreign voice to me, considering our American accents, but more of a European accent, it's like, techno. I miss you. I miss you. Something weird like that. I'm so sad. I'm so sad. I miss you. I miss a sculpture made of clay. A sculpture made of clay. Just say, is he bought? A photo of a painting. Could I hear it without the pads for a bit? A photo of a painting. A photo of 
photo of a sculpture. A photo of a sculpture. <laughs> a photo of a painting. A sculpture made of clay. Oh, you son of a biznatch. Okay, we gotta do it again. It's somehow more soothing. Well, that's whatever. I don't like that at all. Dollar's house music, how dare you? We're still stuck on a photo of a painting. A photo. Because that's what we have in our phones, right? Turn off that auto pitch. It's too strong. Sculpture made of clay. Okay, okay. okay.
So maybe the pads just don't need to be there all the time. I think that's what your problem... You know, you got a real problem, Dallas House Music. No, the, I think the problem is, is that the pads can't always be there. We need to build up to the pads. You're getting... Uh, you're getting too used to the pattern. It's, it's driving you insane. Second part comes in too soon. <laughs> I love everybody. Everybody just wants to drive the ship here. <clears throat> it comes in too soon. Fix it. Quick. Uh, one of two. This one will be two, okay. Oh, I see what, what the deal is here. Okay. That can't be in that spot at all. It needs to be here. Microtimed. God damn it. Microtimed back to this trigger. You know what the problem is, is that I can't microtime it back far enough because the resolution is half scale. So when I microtime it back all the way one step, it's actually just landing on a 16th note before this one. So I can't even do that. So that sucks. Hmm. I just can't even do that. If I, I mean, you can't slice it like you want to slice it. Is it dig attack auto slices? I mean, we can we can have a look and see what it does. We can have a look, huh? All right, four slices. Let's see. I mean, look at the, look at that. I and mean, we can bring the grid up, but see if we can snag it. All right, let's see. Even if we do it this way, no, this, that won't change anything. That won't make it any better. God damn it. Like, I'm not going to be able to put it in the spot in time that I need it. I want it in a certain part of the time. Do you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying, saying? So there's something that I could do. There is something, you still have the same resolution, unfortunately, can't nudge it any sooner. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. So what I could do is put the resolution back at regular resolution. So right now we're at half resolution. We could go back up to one to one resolution, and then I can microtime it and set this trigger to be a one of four and the other one to be a four of four. And that will, that will work. That'll work. Paste. Alright, so then we go four of four, 
And this one's one of four. that timing copy right, let's just listen to it oh it starts like right here it's right here yeah, 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 yeah. Let's just get rid of that trade condition for now. It's not there, it's in here. Yes, there's distortion on the dig attack. Do you mean for the voice? That's like my typical thing that I do. Hey, what up? It's user-friendly sounds. I don't think I've ever seen you on the stream. Hello. I like what you do with your electron boxes. You do very good work. Solo the voice with them claps in the 303. All right. I think that last part of the vocal, the whole sculpture made of clay thing. I think maybe we just like chop this, make this do weird shit or something. 
My dig my syntax is as hot as the sun. I don't like about this intact. <laughs> Let me tell you. For one, it gets way too hot. Yeah, that's one thing. It's still not as hot as that stupid SSL Big Six mixer I have. I think it's too hot. It doesn't have chorus. But you know what I really, really think? Like, pops and clicks on it also drive me insane. But nothing drives me more insane on the syntax than this. These freaking absolutely useless retrigger things these are so useless they could be macros if i could program like multiple destinations they would be amazing but they're just like does anybody use them all you can do with them is like program trap hats and i don't know how many people are buying syntax and making trap i don't think it's that many I think like most people making traps are using a sample based work or using traps. They're trapping rats. Most people making trap are using a sample based workflow, which is not the syntax. So I don't know that it drives me crazy. It's just like a waste of real estate could be something really awesome. They could do so much more. That's what I'm talking about. They're so you like, look at this modifiers on. So is it? Function up. Retrig menu? Like, what are these? Okay, so this velocity mod... Actually, let's talk about this for a sec. You can record... I mean, you can re record them, yeah. Yeah, you can record them. So, you use them for polyrhythmic hi-hats and percussion. Awesome! Yeah, poly... Okay, okay, yeah, there's some functionality. I'm just... I don't need dedicated buttons to do polyrhythmic hi-hats. I just don't like well, you can put them you just dial them in with the retrig like you just I don't know there's just something it could do something else but let's talk about this for one more second 
velocity modifier, okay? I can assign the velocity. We can go into the retrig menu, or I can go into the trig menu in here, in my sound setup, and I can turn off velocity to volume. <laughs> this is like my long, my hair, like. And I can turn off velocity to volume as I twiddle. But check this out. No, this is legit cool. All right. Everything I do is legit cool. Everything. You can turn off velocity to volume. And then we can go into the velocity modifier. I should just, whatever. You can go into the velocity modifier. And now we can assign these meta positions. And they can go to things that you normally can't go to. No, that's not true. They just go to all the normal things. Anyway, I can assign those velocities to these meta modifiers, and then I can turn these into macro controls this way. This is the only thing that is useful. It is legit cool, right? That's legit cool. So then I can actually play, like, this button can make four tracks delay go all the way up, and the reverb go all the way up, and repitch four different instruments at the same time. And then this button and this button can do, you know, it is, it is what it's like. It's, it's still limited, but it's cool. So like we could try it. Do we want to try it? I don't know if I want to try it. I guess we'd have to go back. Why, why did I leave that menu? All right, let's go to this sound, go in here, go to setup. But first, we got to turn off velocity to volume. Bye. Turn that off. So now there's no velocity, but who cares? Because we're not programming with velocity pads anyway. This shit should be turned off in the first place. Um, so let's go back in here and go to velocity mod. And I don't know what this sound is. We know what it is now. All right, we can have the first one go to the chord. I wish it wasn't so loud. I guess it's not four different tracks. I forget, it is just for the sound that you have assigned which is which sucks it's not like the mark ii electron boxes where you can like literally choose a different track to modulate through the velocity modifier waveform sure I guess this could be like a tech decay time. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of cool. Okay, so this chord is now adjustable by the velocity. So check this out. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of cool. All right. Watch. I turn the velocity up, it changes it, it opens the filter cutoff, changes the chord, and changes the waveform. Now imagine doing that with like a bass line. Or with the dual VCO. Could do some cool stuff. You know what I'm talking about, user friendly. I don't know, it's definitely something I should play with more. I, I don't know why. I, you know what's great? 
is that I decided to complain about the syntax, and in the middle of my complaint, I found something really cool about the syntax. That's that is why we like Electron is because it's just cool. Like it just has cool shit all over the place. Even if I don't think it's cool at the time, I learned to find that it's cool. Like I learned to like it. One of the best things about the syntax, actually, so like, all right, we're done complaining about the syntax since we've discovered that it's actually amazing. But one of the best things about the syntax is the effects track. And the effects track lets you treat your delay as something that you can sequence. I know user friendliness I'm talking about because they always do that. You love sequencing that delay. At least I'm pretty sure that's what you're up to. Um, and that's something you can do on the syntax, but you can't do on these machines. But you can do here, and you can do slide tricks with the delay here, which is cool. So you can get some like car plus strong type sounds as um, starting from like just a normal delay, and then all of a sudden it can go into car plus, and then you can turn it off on the sequencer. So you can do some really interesting stuff with uh, effects sequencing. Syntax lets you do that. These ones don't. That's partly why it's more expensive. That in the analog engines, but it just has more functionality. It has retrig for synth stuff. I actually use the retrig, so <laughs> we can do this velocity modifier thing, but on top of it, we could also do a retrig. So the retrig has a velocity uh, modifier in the retrig, and it can go up on a slope or down on a slope. So technically, like if we muted everything, go over to this track, and go to the retrig, let's make it go real fast. But we'll have the velocity go down, because we're already at the max velocity. We'll go start at the max velocity and go down. We'll have this retrig go for a while. Started off too quiet. Well, just listen to it. <laughs> what? That's nuts. Whoops. Now we go a little bit slower. Isn't that crazy sounding? That's all from one trig. Here we go, it's gonna sound even better now. Syntax effects block. Start that off like that, there we go. Ooh, that's really nice sounding. Here we go. So the retrig is triggering the velocity and that's moving through the chord shapes. That's really cool. That's really cool. That's just not a sound you can get without programming like a million steps. Let's have it start at unison, see what happens. some weird territory now.
<laughs> All right, well, it doesn't work in this track, but you get the idea. It's still pretty cool. go half speed. Yeah, we we went into this trying to make techno, but we did kind of end up in Acid House, which is fine, because I, I do love Acid House. I think that's pretty cool. That fuzzy sound is actually the Octatrack's DSP just being like, you've worked me too hard, and the only way for me to get rid of it is to either turn my Octatrack off or to go into my reverb, change reverb, and return to that reverb on both sides. There we go. Isn't that whack? It's so stupid. Digitone isn't doing anything. The Digitone isn't doing anything. I don't know. I don't really use my Digitone that much anymore, to be honest. I was gonna buy, I was gonna buy the, uh, or I'm thinking about buying, I'm still thinking about it because it's still a good deal. I have a Paybu, such a stupid name. Uh, I have a Paybu credit card with uh, uh, b and Photo, so then you can get like, you can buy stuff with the tax, without the tax. So if you're gonna buy something really big, like a $3,000 synthesizer, for instance, it's a good chunk of money you save, you know, it's like 300 bucks. Um, and there's a, and it's also $600 off. I'm talking about the Melbourne Instruments Nina with the, the encoders that move on their own. The thing sounds amazing. I know people think that's a gimmick. It's really not. It's really awesome. And I've played on one. And I, I'm really interested in picking one up. It's $3,000 and I have a lot of synthesizers. And I'm like, do I need to spend that money? 
But if I bought it, it would replace the Digitone. It's four part, 12 voice multi timbral with wavetables and every kind of sound you could ever need. And I would just sequence it from the Digitact or from the Octatrack. Um, and I think it would probably not just sound better than the Digitone, but I would probably just use the sounds more. Because the reason I don't use the Digitone that much is because I have, I've had it for so long, I've kind of gotten bored of the FM sound. Uh, and that's all it does, you know, even though it's subtractive, that's really, that is all it does. And, uh, you know, business them needs to move on, I guess. I don't really know. Wait. I know. I know. <laughs> that's a lot of cat faces. User friendly. I want to buy it. Those cat faces don't look happy with me. Are they not happy because I'm not because I'm not using my Digitone very much? I bought the analog Digitone pack and it changed the synth for me. <laughs> um, I still want that Nina. I mean, I love the Digitone. Like, look, it's it's here. Don't give me sad cat faces, angry cats. Forgive me, cat. Forgive me. Forgive me, kitty. Forgive me. Um, I'll have to look into the analog Digitone pack. I don't think that will change it for me. I know the Digitone quite well. I've had it for a really long time, and I can make awesome sounds with it. It's just that I like the sounds I make on the Syntax more, and I don't need that much Digitone playing all the time when I, do I don't need to use all the tracks at the same time. And I would love to have a nice analog polysynth in the mix. Because right now all I can do is sample analog polys into my Digitact or into my Octatrack. And I want to have something I can tweak with my hands. And I can't, you're just not going to do it. You'll never convince me that the Digitone, it's 24 dB digital multimode filter will sound anything like an analog poly with a ladder filter, an analog ladder filter. It's like nobody's going to tell me that 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 can do that because it can't it's not possible nina is beautiful thank you deep breath <laughs> this is very intense i'm a wigwam i'm a teepee relax you're too tense oh my god we have two bottles of sparkling water maybe this is the colder one If only LaCroix would sponsor me. Okay, we've gotten really far with our track. Let's just like see what it sounds like to start from mostly nothing. This is how we open up a banger. So maybe we'll start with like... Maybe we don't want to start with the voice. Maybe we start with the... Did we put an LFO on that to like give it some weirdness? I guess we did. This is how we'll start it.
That's really as far as it, the song goes. We do need more elements. I didn't like the intro that much. Let me try that again. What's on seven? Anything? No. Let's try adding a shaker. I think like that'll be the energy. We'll shake it up. Go on and shake it up. Gotta shake it up, baby, for me. That's no shaker. Oh. But it's illegal. Tambourine? Tasting different velocities. Okay. Stop yelling at me. Oh, god damn it. Let's try it again. Okay. Maybe. how we do that. Andy Savina, do y'all actually have 1100 shaker samples and snares? Not me. I have like, I do have packs of samples. I kind of use the same sounds over and over because they're sounds that I like, but I use a lot of the same sounds throughout all of my tracks. I just kind of manipulate them a bit here and there to kind of change them because I don't know. I don't need to, I don't know. I don't have a good answer for that. Just like the same sounds over and over again. 
because I'm a human and humans are dumb. Okay, glitchy. One last time. One last time. Take that out. Leave that in. Leave all that in. Maybe take that out. Take all this out. Leave that in. Take that out. Find a good effect to start with. Maybe go to build. That one didn't work. didn't work. I guess we could start like this. God damn it, I hit the wrong one. Here we go. This is our intro. Where's our riser at? John, what's up? John Wayne in the house. God damn it. Okay, I'm just trying I'm just trying to perform this song out, but it's hard because all the sounds are spread across everywhere. And I'm
That was insane. That was whack. John, you know I 303. <laughs> what instrument do you play? I play the low pass filter. Never seen anybody play the low pass filter like me. Mmm. These fingers are ripped. I still think that performance sucked. It sucked. I failed you. I failed YouTube. I failed everybody. <laughs> low pass filter solo. <laughs> Is that a real 303? How dare you? DC Merrick. It is a Roland TB03. You think I got money like that lying around for real 303s? Look at me. I'm just a lowly cable salesman. Buy ModBang cables. ModBang everything. John, let me send you a riser. <laughs> An Octatrack riser. I don't know if you'd actually like using it on your channel, but you should have one. You deserve it. Lowly cable salesman. Buy ModBank cables. We love you. They glow in the dark. They're slim. They're wonderful. They're the best cables on the market. They're even better than tendrils. I said it. Well, depends. Depends. I think the right angle are amazing. If you're into modular, that is. Aw, oh, Squilla, what up? Look at you putting. Only mods can do such action, such amazing actions. Oh, it's been two hours. Okay. We're done. I'm so hungry. I'm beyond hungry. Um, <clears throat> thanks, everybody, for hanging out today. This was a good, good, fun stream. And, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I'll ship you one over. I'll, I'll hit you up. I'll, uh, I'll find a way to hip you up. Hit, hit. I'll hip. I'll hip you. I'll, I'll hit. Anyway, I'll send you one. And, uh, yeah, you'll like it. But everyone else, <laughs> never mind, forget what I was about to say. You're all fantastic. This has been a really great stream. Uh, if you're interested in supporting me in this stream, you can join patreon.com slash easybot. All those effects you saw me doing with Octatrack, that's all part of those templates that I make. I have a new one coming out. It's supposed to already been out, but instead I made a video for YouTube. Shame on me, teaching you how to make 8-bar, 16-bar, 32-bar loopers that disassociate from the sequencer. It's a really cool looper concept. Check it out. It might break your skull. Your brain might leak out. Not a bad thing. But if you want to really learn how to use the Octatrack, try these insane tutorials that I do because you have to learn all the ins and outs of the Octatrack. Um, so if you wish to do that, continue to view these, hit like on the videos, do that whole thing, but visit Patreon, uh, come into my Discord, it's completely free, there'll be a link in the description, everybody hangs out there, everybody in the world is there, the whole world is there, um, it's a really good time, very, very safe place, yes, subsidize easy, but he's a tremendous resource, thank you, John, listen to John, John makes beats that I listen to, because John's beats are amazing and also watch watch john makes beats watch user-friendly sounds thanks user-friendly for hanging out today um appreciate appreciate you chatting cool to connect with you i love what you do i watch a lot of your instagram stuff um yeah what's up you need easy pot no you don't i also used to i just want to say this to you user-friendly i'm pointing at a computer to you um your whole modular system, NerdSec, ER301, Rossum Assimilator, that is my old Eurorack system. I had the same Eurorack system. I still have Rossum and NerdSec, but I don't have an ER301 because mine had a bunch of horrible sound that it would make from the LED. I swear to God, it's from the LED. But anyway, absolutely my favorite stuff. So you have that system. Every time I see it, I'm like, oh, I want an ER301 back because it's just the coolest. It's the coolest Eurorack module on the planet. But, um, yeah, all right, I'm going to let you guys go. Thanks so much for hanging out. I'll see you next Monday. I'm going to try doing this on Mondays. This is going to be my new thing, I think. We're going to try it, so I'll see you guys next Monday. Take it easy.